Okay, so joining us uh, is uh, Charlotte uh, Iserby to uh, break down uh, this information. Charlotte, it is wonderful to have you here. I want to go to the beginning uh, briefly, Skull and Bones, the tie-in, and then what the plan was, what you discovered in the 80s as the head of policy, number two position, Department of Education, your whistleblowing, and now what's currently happening with education and your warning for the public. Uh, but we salute you for your work, and thank you for reissuing a new book. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Alex, and thank you, uh, all of your audience, for your support you know, through the years. Uh, I think the best place for people to go uh, is, and you have that, PDF, I believe, up on your website now. At least yes. I asked for that. It's a PDF, and it's called America's Road to Ruin. And there were two marvelous gals, researchers that uh, I respect highly, very involved in the uh, extraordinary research all of us have done on this, who heard that first video that was filmed on the river here, uh, saw it, Alex's video, that those guys did a good job on, and it was in regard to education. But it really dealt with everything, right? Uh, I didn't deal so much with the order, and I will deal with that in, within about two minutes. But uh, it dealt with my whole life uh, since I was uh, went abroad in uh, when I was 21 years old. And uh, it's beautifully done. It's a transcript. The gals transcribed that video, Alex. And then one of our most talented people, Deborah Niwa, uh, who's in publishing and graphics and all, put it all together, even as a picture of my little dog in it and my husband and me, as a PDF. So your listeners can click on that, and they can read that. It's 16 pages. That's the video that your great guys did when they were up here, the first one. And then the second one was on the order. And uh, I don't know what, uh, that has not been transcribed, but I hope people will go and look at it because it has had a maximum number of hits. It was, these have been very good videos. And by the way, I just think your guys are great. You have a tremendously capable uh, uh, staff there with, uh, creating these videos. But let's, uh, you know, I found out something about the order. It's great. Actually, I found out more about the order since you got onto it and actually since Anthony Sutton got onto it than I ever knew before because obviously, uh, as George Bush would say, uh, it's a secret. <laughs> so I can't talk about it. I mean, I don't know anything about it basically because it was a secret and my father and grandfather couldn't talk about it, but I, I did know all their friends. And that, did, that, that really helped out a great deal. There's a tremendous amount... Uh, there's a very interesting um, chapter in Chris Milligan's book on the order. Uh, what's it called? Fleshing Out Skull and Bones. That book has not been reprinted, but it's a wonderful book, uh, Fleshing Out Skull and Bones. And Chris Milligan knew Anthony Sutton, too. I did a chapter in there that's quite interesting. If anybody wants to go, I think it's uh, you may be able to find that on the Internet, about my family's connections as well. Now, uh, when I, after the last interview that we did on this, uh, I thought, you know, I was looking through some of my old files, and I found a very interesting article from one of the little old patriotic newsletters that we managed to get around the country in regard to Harold Howe and how he was responsible under Lyndon Johnson for all the major changes in education using, of course, the minorities to bring about the destruction of our education system that we're looking at today with consolidation, getting rid of little schools and all this. Remember way back in the 60s, they said it was because they wanted the minorities to have a better education. That wasn't it at all. Harold Howe came out and said with this integration, he was going to totally turn the education system on its head. And so they put in busing and they did all this that. And here my little head is going, I'm thinking, Harold Howe, you know what? I have to go take a look in one of those. Well, well Charlotte, I, listen, I want you to get into that. But, but, but for you to say, I know nothing about it and giggle, you gave Anthony Sutton the documents, the materials, the role list, the information when nothing was known. Your, your father, uh, uh, you know, his father were skull and bones. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you do know a lot. Your son knows a ton. A lot of ground. We know a lot, but her, uh, listen, Alex, what I want people to know is this is so important. And you interrupted me, okay? Harold Howe. I looked him up. Here, you want to hear what he was at Skull and Bones? He's Skull and Bones. Now, this, I'm, I'm going to say this convinces me that the order at 
Yale, and I didn't really have to be too much convinced. But when I found this out, I'm convinced that the order at Yale of Skull and Bones is responsible for the complete transformation of American education to workforce training, to considering our children as nothing but animals, which was the philosophy of Wilhelm Wundt in Leipzig, who trained all the American educators, starting with Hall, going over in the mid-1800s, trained them in how to not educate, but to train our children as animals using Pavlovian methods, Skinner. I know, I, I know that's true. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced. And when I read that Harold, and I'm going to read Harold Hell, 1940, Skull and Bones. This is on page 128 of one of those little black books. Uh, it says here, education, born August 17, 1918, Hartford, uh, Connecticut, uh, vice president for education and research, Ford Foundation, and the address. Uh, residents, very fancy, always these guys, east side of New York City. Uh, Yale Corporation, elected member, successor trustee, principal, Walnut Hills High School, Cincinnati, 53 to 57, goes on Newton Junior College, etc. Superintendent of School, Scarsdale, New York, director of Learning Institute of North Carolina, trustee, Vassar College, trustee, college entrance exam board, U.S. Commissioner of Education, 1965 to 68. That's when the damage was done, if you recall, folks. The damage was... Yeah, most people aren't experts on education like you are. Well, Just that's when the, re the total upheaval, putting outcomes, performance-based education, elementary and secondary education... That's when dog training came in, and, and, and so that's why this that is so is key. when the dog training came in, they changed from teaching the teachers, teaching students uh, history, math, science, and all what they know in their head to what they can do, performance. Then they retrained all the teachers as little psychiatrists after 1965, which was uh, what Brock Chisholm, the Canadian psychiatrist, good friend of Alger Hiss, called for getting rid of the conscience. And if you're going to get rid of the conscience, you have to use psychiatry. And the reason they want to get rid of the conscience was, now let's get into the war business. Hmm? Stay there. We're going to come right back. But again... And you're perfectly suited to discover this. Family who's skull and bones, you expose that. Uh, I mean, you're the person that first released information. Then you're an expert on education, former head of policy. And then you learn, hiding in plain view, that that was their real secret power. And you trace it right back to the German mind control engineers they used on the Hessian mercenaries. You wonder why people can't think. You wonder why they seem to be so dumbed down. You, you wonder why they giggle at you when you talk about a new world order because they've been Pavlovian conditioned that it's cute and funny and the info babe laughs on Fox News when they talk about it so they're winners psychologically when they're losers and then there's the chemicals in the water everything else but German scientists it, it's on record develop what became psychiatry it's not Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud and all that so uh, and of course the Germans developed the Hessian soldiers who love being slaves love being military slaves. They had slavery in Germany, white slaves, and they were happy to be white slaves. And they said, well, well, the British royalty was German royalty. It was really Transylvanian royalty. They'd always said, you've got the best soldier slaves. How do you do it? They don't even run off very often, though some of them did actually run off here because there were big German communities. They broke their conditioning. Uh, you know, they had the blue uniforms, the big black boots. That's where that all comes from, Hessian boots. Uh, and th they were the main force that, w that was backing up the Redcoats. And, of course, Washington beat a bunch of them at Trenton, New Jersey, famously. But, but Charles, the point is, in the video that we just reposted along with the PDF report you talked about at Infowars.com, you break it all down eloquently with the documents, but the British royalty funded people to go over and figure this out. And then you've got the German and the British connection funding Skull and Bones being set up as this think tank. Please continue, because this is so key, what you discovered and all these connections. Well, it's terribly important because uh, when I started out, I didn't understand behavior modern operant conditioning. It's so simple, uh, folks. It's simply uh, when you go to the doctor, the doctor hits your knee, you know, used to anyway, with a little hammer, and your knee pops up. It's a neurological reaction. And uh, Wilhelm Wundt, who was a psychologist in the mid-1800s in 
in Leipzig, he finally uh, realized that he could not uh, do anything with uh, getting people to change their behavior, just using regular philosophy and psychology, uh, because the soul, he couldn't deal with the soul, it floats around, right? So he decided just to use the neurology, and if you can understand that, you understand why Americans just have these reflexes, and uh, you, you tell them something, and they, if you, if you reward them immediately, they'll do anything you want for the rest of time. But the important thing about this relationship with Skull and Bones is that Wilhelm Wundt, uh, his, he was born in 1832 in Germany. His father was a minister. His grandfather... Kirshner Karl Kassemer Wundt was professor of Heidelberg University, and um, this uh, the, the, the Illuminati order documents that we've been we've been able to get a hold of that Raphael uh, in the Illuminati is identified as the same professor Karl Kassemer Wundt, and is referred to in the Illuminati provincial report from Utica. Uh, 1782. Now, that is the grandfather of Wilhelm Wundt. So, this method that is being introduced in the United States, mainly, of course, to the computer, because as B.F. Skinner said, the computer is my box, and Skinner followed in the steps of Pavlov, who, interestingly enough, was trained by Wundt, not the other way around. So, what's going in now oh, is this goodness. method I'm talking to you about this minute, operant conditioning. Now, you know what we did, dog. You know, you want your dog to sit. Uh, you give him a, he sits, you give a dog biscuit. He'll sit for you the next time. When I first saw this in the U.S. Department of Ed, I wondered, all these books that I would see in the bookshelves, the department said, what works? And I didn't pay much attention. One day I pulled it out, a book out, and I saw, this is under... Bell now, this is some of the big secrets here. Stay there. Charlotte Isserby is our guest. The amazing book, back in print, The Deliberate Dominion of America, available at InfoWars.com. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Scientists Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com.